Dr. Ryan here. I hope you and your family are well. Thank you for joining me. And the third of this uh, physician examination series, we're talking about infective endocarditis today. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I strongly encourage you to do so. Now, when we are approaching a patient with infective endocarditis, these are the different steps you want to go through so that you are systematic and you're not going to miss anything. Right? So first up, introduce yourself to the patient, position the patient, usually at 45 degrees, uh, with kind of semi -fowlers. Right, and obtain adequate exposure, especially of the precordium. Second thing is you want to take the temperature and um, just inspect the general body habitus. Right. So does the patient look marfanoid? Does the patient look that they in obvious dispersity distress? Okay, then you pick up the hands as convention. Right? Us physicians, we like to start with the hands. Examining for splinter hemorrhages, for clubbing, and for vasculitic or purpuric lesions, as well as Janeway's lesions and Oz's nodes. We we'll look at a couple of examples shortly, right? Then you want to take the pulse, right? And assess the rate, the rhythm, and the character. Rate and rhythm best assessed at the radio, volume best assessed at either the brachial or the carotid, right? And then what you want to do is take the blood pressure as well. Very important. Working your way up the forearms and arms, check for needle marks, phlebitis, or skin sepsis. Needle marks alludes to uh, the possibility that the patient uses intravenous drugs and that can be exposed to tricuspid valve endocarditis. Okay, lymphadenopathy, purpura as well. Right, looking at the jugular venous pressure as you work your way up to the neck and the carotid pulse for character. Then you want to look into the mouth and just assess the dental hygiene of the patient. Um, you're checking for conjunctival petechiae in the eyes and take out the fundoscope and look for rot spots. Right, when you're approaching the precardium now, you want to assess the cardiomegaly in terms of the apex, is it displaced, and of course the character, and you're going to palpate for the thrill. When you ask our teasing, pays particular attention for murmurs, especially that of regurgitation or incompetence, or is it a flow murmur, right? Is it mastostenosis, right? Listen for a third heart sound, and listen to the lung fields for crepitations or rubs. Palpate for the splenomegaly. And check for a pulsating hepatomegaly, which indicates tricuspid regurgitation. Your analysis as well, because we're looking for microscopic hematuria, which happens in the filipinicolitis. But if you have a renal infarct, you can have macroscopic hematuria. Already. Okay, here are a couple of examples, beautiful examples here. This is Janeway's lesions. So remember that Oslo's nodes are palpable and painful, but Janeway's lesions are macular and non-tender. This is an example of the Janeway lesion over the palm, and this is the soles. All right, here is, a, these are conjunctival hemorrhages, all righty. Here is a beautiful image, smooth this across. This is an example of Roth's spot. You can see it's a vasculitic lesion with a pale center, all right? These are Oslo's nodes, which are raised, palpable, and they are painful. This is an example of poor dentition. These are splinter hemorrhages, right, which we can appreciate here, splinter hemorrhages. All right, so... To make the diagnosis of infective endocarditis, we use the modified Duke criteria. This is adapted from the European Cardiology Society guidelines. So we need uh, two major. I will talk about the criteria, right? So we've got definite possible or rejected infective endocarditis. So you've got pathological criteria and clinical criteria. From the clinical, you need two major or one major and three minor or five minor. And pathologically, we microorganisms demonstrated by culture or on histological examination of a vegetation, a vegetation that is embolized, or an intercardiac abscess specimen, or you got uh, vegetation or intercardiac abscess confirmed by histo showing antibiotic right? So possible antibiotic is when you have one major and one minor, or three minor. You reject the diagnosis of endocarditis if you have a firm alternative diagnosis or you have resolution of symptoms suggesting endocarditis with antibiotic therapy for under four days. So if you've got no pathological evidence of endocarditis at surgery or autopsy, with antibiotic therapy for less than four days, or you do not meet the criteria for possible IE. Now, when we speak about major criteria, we're basically looking at imaging and we're looking at blood culture, right? So blood culture must be positive for endocarditis. Typical microorganisms consistent with endocarditis from two separate cultures, showing that, you know, viridans strep, strep calidisticus, which is strep bulbus, the Hasek group, which is hemophilus, actinobacillus, cardio, Bacterium echinilla and kingera, self aureus, or community acquired enterococci in the absence of a primary focus. Or you got microorganisms consistent with endocarditis from persistently positive blood cultures, meaning you got more than two positive cultures of blood samples drawn 
Greece been 12 hours apart, or all of three, or a majority of four separate cultures of blood, and the time difference between the first and the last is must be at least more than one hour apart. Or if you've got a single blood culture positive for Cochlea Panetti. Imaging criteria looking at the echo, right? Normally we have transthoracic echo available to us, but transesophageal echo is much more sensitive, right? And what we're looking for is vegetations, we're looking for abscess or pseudoaneurysm or intracardiac fistula, valve perforation or aneurysm, new partial dehiscence of a prosthetic valve. You can also put criteria on the FDG PET scan uh, and cardiac CT as outlined. All right. Minor criteria is basically predisposition, such as a predisposing heart condition, like you know congenital heart disease, for instance, or injection drug use. Fever with a temperature over 38 degrees Celsius. You've got your vascular and immunological phenomenology, which we covered a bit already. So vascular means those um, like major arterial emboli, septic pulmonary infarct, mycotic infectious aneurysm in the walls of the vessels, intracranial hemorrhage, conjunctival hemorrhages, and genital lesions. Immunological phenomenology being glomerular nephritis, osseous nodes, rod spots, rheumatoid factor positive, and if you've got blood cultures which do not meet the major criteria that we have outlined. Okay, my friends, the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 tells us, Paul is addressing the church in Galatia, and he says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, so shall he also reap. This is the principle that applies to every aspect in life. It's a wise principle by which we can live. If you sow love, you will reap love. If you sow compassion and mercy and forgiveness, you will reap these things. But if you sow discord and bitterness, then you will also reap that in your life. I pray that we will um, embody the fruit of the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5.22 uh, at all times. Have yourself a wonderful day. I'll see you soon with another um, examination approach from a physician perspective. God bless you.